In today's video, I want to cover how to set up a Unify AC Mesh access point. We'll cover how to set up in both the access point as well as in mesh configuration. If you want to find out more about this device, then watch the rest of this video. And of course, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe as it does help support the channel. Many of Unify's access points can be used either as a traditional access point or in a mesh configuration. Briefly, the basic difference is how it connects to your network. In a traditional access point configuration, the device will connect via an Ethernet cable and basically extend or create your Wi-Fi network. When connected this way, all APs are treated the same, so depending on where you're located will determine which access point you're actually connected to. In this mode, all access points have approximately the same latency and there's no extra hops. In a mesh configuration, the access point will be connected to another access point via a wireless connection and not an Ethernet cable. So that can extend the range of your network without running extra cables. The downside is you have an extra hop and some additional loss of bandwidth before you get to the router, which adds a bit of latency. Today we're going to compare each mode to see what the performance impact is, as well as go through this new outdoor access point that I'm installing. As part of the reason for getting this was to get Wi-Fi signal into my backyard, I opted to go for an outdoor access point. Before we get started on creating and testing each configuration, I want to briefly cover the hardware I'll be using. As you can see, we have the device itself. It also comes with a power injector. A couple of different, a couple of antennas, a wall mount, extra grommet, and some screws. So if we actually look at the device a little bit closer, we'll see there's a pop-out hatch, and underneath the hatch is a um, an Ethernet jack, which can be used for either a Ethernet cable with PoE, or you can use the PoE injector. The wireless feature is typically on by default, but if you're having issues, make sure that all the features are enabled. I'll post a link to a reference article that kind of walks you through everything that needs to be on. So to get this set up, I recommend that you initially plug the device into your LAN first, rather than trying to pair it wirelessly. Though this isn't really mandatory, it can simplify your upgrading the firmware and adopting into your network. If we look at the screen here, we'll see that the I've already had powered up the device and it's pending uh, adoption and it says wireless. As you'll see here shortly, depending on the combination of firmware that you have between your controller and your, and your access point, you could potentially have a problem adopting it if it's strictly wirelessly. So that's why I recommend plugging it into the LAN first, getting it configured, adopted, upgraded, and then you can deploy it wirelessly. So since it wasn't adopting correctly, I went ahead and did a reset, plugged it into my LAN, and now we can see that we're ready to adopt. And it's going to go ahead and upgrade the firmware, write the firmware, provision the access point. Then we'll be able to see how it works both wired and wirelessly. Now that we have everything set up, we can verify that the device changes from wired access mode into wireless mesh mode when we simply unplug the cable and that it automatically reverts back to a wired access point when we plug the cable back in. To test the performance as accurately as possible, I'll take a baseline measurement next to the access point while it's connected to a wired connection using speedtest.net on my iPad and iPerf on my laptop. I'll use the device map in the controller so that I can verify that the iPad and the laptop are connected to the outdoor access point. So as you can see from the testing, I'm getting quite a drop in performance as I move to the far side of my backyard. Because of the distance, the drop is somewhat expected going from right next to the access point to clear across my backyard, so the drop isn't totally unexpected. The other item that we can extract from this test is that when you hook up your access point, via a wireless connection rather than a hardwire connection is that you do take a significant drop in performance. Now just to be caught just to be clear, um, this could probably be some of this could probably be tuned out. So it really depends on where you put the the mesh connection in relationship to you know where your low spots are. As we look at the performance results of iPerf, we can see much the same thing with almost a 3x difference in performance between the wired access point and a wireless mesh configuration. 
I think if we summarize the test results, it's pretty safe to say that it's always better to use a wired connection whenever you can. However, if you're in a pinch and you have no other alternative, setting up a wireless mesh is extremely simple. In summary, I've been a big fan of Unify products for years now, and for me, they continue to set the standard for the best blend of performance, price, and ease of use. With the basic functions easy to set up and use, yet with plenty of features to keep power users and even enterprise happy. This is one of the easiest mesh configurations I have seen to date, and it can be changed to a standard, better performing access point just by plugging in a cable without changing anything else. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have, please subscribe and click that notifications icon as it truly helps support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.